Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to today's edition of Beyond the Ordinary Show. Y'all, we weren't going to have a call today, election day in the U.S., uh, but the guidance came in strongly last week to, to invite someone that could remind us and assist us and, and guide us into the energies, into the anchors that we all can hold. Um as we're in great times of transition and yes, in the worldly view, but also individually. And so Phyllis just obviously came and it's, I'm grateful she said yes, because it feels very aligned. Um, and the transmissions that we've had the last couple of times that Phyllis has been on have just been powerful. And y'all comment on it so much and it felt like there's an attunement that is occurring. Uh, for all of us to activate and be in harmony with what else is possible for us. So we're gonna, we'll get into some Q&A today. Um, there will be another powerful transmission, I am sure, on today's call. Uh, we'll see what Phyllis wants to guide through. Um, but again, we'll dive in. And thank you all for being on the call today. And with that, Phyllis, welcome to BTO today. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for inviting me um, back for this evening. And mm -hmm. so I'm excited to be here and, and see what comes up. See what comes up. Exactly. <laughs> Phyllis asked me what we're speaking of tonight. I said, I don't know, but I do. <laughs> but I do. And what I'm strongly, and I wanted to keep this very organic with you, Phyllis, uh, because the guidance is really to be in the present moment rather than come with an agenda. Um, and for me, my experience today, and, and I'm curious what y'all are feeling and type into the chat box and, and let me know your experience of the energies just today, what you're feeling. I've been feeling a wave of energy that has had me, it feels like a lot of high energy running through. It's not anxiety. It's difficult for me to see, sit still unless I'm really focused on a transmission with someone like really dropping in and being present. Um, and I'm curious what you might be experiencing with what, um, with this flow that, that seems to be pretty heightened um, for many people that I talk to um, and what your interpretation of those energies are. Yeah. You know, I, um, people have asked me, are you watching the news? Are you doing this? And I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> uh, I mean, I can feel the energies and it has been so intensified. It, it's really like a, it's a witnessing just energetically frequency wise of what is happening around me, what's happening to the people around me. And I don't even, there, there is that, there's almost like this, heightened sense of anticipation mm. to basically see where we're going to be at and, and it's a navigation yeah it's it's, it's about yeah it's, it's like what do we need what are we going to need to navigate for ourselves right phyllis can i ask you a favor is there a way to turn up the volume on your side just a little bit is that better it's a little bit better and even a little higher would be even more better. That's my gain. How's that? That's much better. Thank you. That's much better. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. As I said, I think there's really a, a heightened level of anticipation. It's mm. almost like everybody took a, a deep inhale and they're waiting to exhale. Mm. And that's kind of the way that I feel as well. For me, just with the spiritual work and so forth that I've been energetically called to do, which is really kind of more the private work that I do, which is, um, someone told me, it's like heavenly mandates. And, and so that's what I call them. But I've been doing a lot of that, that work in the background and it's not about guiding the vote or anything. It's really about humanity is guiding the vote. 
Hmm. Whatever is happening at any moment in time is a reflection of what is happening throughout humanity. We are the creators of our environment, the creator of our lives. And so we each have a stake in what happens, what's, what's happening in the moment. But we also, we also have the ability to create or create change as well. well. What I'm noticing today that's been different from other times heightened energies come up this way, I'm not feeling the intensity of a hypervigilance in our communities the way that I felt it before. There's more of a peacefulness and waiting for things to evolve because it all it, it, it seems like the seeds have already been planted and they have been for a while. And again, it's like that Inhale, waiting for that exhale to see what the blossom of those seeds is going to become because of the um, the group consciousness that's creating it. Yeah, and I would totally, I would totally agree with that, mm -hmm. most definitely. Especially when you're talking about the the planting of seeds. That's what Elohim is always referring to. That we have had we have had seeds <laughs> planted from the beginning of time, so to speak, but, but also within our own lives and our choices, our thoughts and so forth are what tend to go back and fuel those seeds, whether those seeds are going to blossom, whether they're going to grow into a tree and bear fruit, right? We all have seeds, right? And so when we're talking about the world as a whole and hum the humanity as a collective, there are many seeds that have been planted and all of them have the capability of being fruitful. So it's mm -hmm. really about what are we tending to, right? Mm -hmm. What is it that we are nurturing? Because what we tend to and what we nurture to as a collective is what is blossoming throughout our society. Mm -hmm. Do the Elohim have... I'll call it a preference for the time being. That's not the, the right word. Um, if we go left or we go right, is there a wrong choice? No, mm -hmm. there isn't. And trust me, I've been asking. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like, well, what happens if this happens? What will happen will happen. You know, but we are on a free will <laughs> planet, right? So it's not it's you can't categorize it as good bad or ugly uh, whatever happens happens and i really believe that what happens is exactly perfect it's exactly i mean in people's mind's eyes some things might happen and they're like oh god no you know that that's the end of the world but but that really isn't true i really think that whatever happens is exactly what was meant to happen. And, you know, I spoke of politicians are catalysts, right? And, you know, Keeley, one on my mind in particular, is a catalyst because they are bringing forward all of those things that have been somewhat hidden, right? And so now that there's a candidate that is a direct reflection of a certain subset of people and aligned with um, people's, you know, certain people's thoughts and so forth, when they have somebody there speaking for them, speaking what's on their heart, there's an excite, there's an underlying excitement. And so those people are coming forward. And the beautiful thing about that, though, is now we can really see what is happening within our world because there isn't, no one's hiding really anymore. So I think that a lot of people are like, oh my goodness, you know, I, I've heard of that, but I didn't know it was actually occurring. And it, a lot of people don't really truly believe something until they get slapped in the face with it or, you know, they're seeing it with their own eyes. And so I really think whatever happens is really going to lift the consciousness of humanity as a whole. Right. And I, I believe, and again, it's, it's part of what I'm feeling in the energetics today, especially in our communities, 
is that we're also shifting our perspective of expectations and why we wish things to land in a certain way. And, and we're, I believe maybe even subconsciously, we're more aware of certain expectations that we've had previously were based on limiting beliefs and, and fear of lack of safety and fear of not knowing. And that we're really maturing in a way that we're perhaps realizing how those expectations were creating timelines that really didn't serve the outcome that we really longed for. And so what would the Elohim or what would you describe as, as what we're learning, the difference of previous expectations and discernment at this time as well? I think a lot of it has to do with really being willing to step aside. Mm. And you do what it is that you do. And every thought, every action has a consequence. And so when you have created whatever it is that you're creating, you get the ball rolling, then you can't step in front of the ball. <laughs> you really have to be able to just step aside and see what happens. And so I think a lot of people tend to try to get in the mix and to change things and so forth. And I don't really, you know, what Elohim had told me was the winner will be the winner and there's really nothing that you, you yourself can do about it. Right. But what are you going to do when that winner steps out on top? That's where that will be the telltale time of what of, um, that will be the telltale thing that will tell us what our next action is each individual within our lives. But yeah, we can't really anticipate, we can't force something to happen. We can't force anything into being because each individual, we aren't the ones that are creating it. It is the collective that is creating it, right? So it's really about um, community. And it's also about what is being ignited within ourselves personally as well, because the collective is not the collective without me or about you and we're each playing you know i'd say we're each candles were a light in that but i believe that so many of us are torches as well and and really th there's ripples that get created in the field through through our actions our thoughts um our beliefs and and i believe as as we are able to attain more clarity in in a field that aligns with higher self, with spirit, with God, that's that is benevolently intended, that that light becomes bigger, it becomes brighter, and it has more of an impact. Definitely. Yeah, I was on a call with someone this morning. And I looked at my computer and I have this um, little thing, my, I have an intention. And I was looking at it and the intention is that I feel whole, healthy, strong, and to walk fully, unapologetically, and profoundly in my truth and purpose. Mm -hmm. And then this energy came in just of what is going on in the world. And the realization that I had was so many people are not walking in their own truth and purpose. They're walking in someone else's truth and purpose. And I realized that for the world to change, it has to be the really the each individual's discovery of who it is that they truly are, that they are divinity in action within this physical flesh and that we have control in cultivating those seeds within our lives and creating exactly what it is that we desire to create, but also what we are meant to create. Mm. And so it's really about nothing we've done thus far has really served to change the mindset of many people. And until we can change the mindset of like a larger majority of people, it's really difficult to bring about change. 
And that's really what the Elohim was um, saying about, you know, sending in forces and so forth to assist humanity in, in creating, to, in, in evolving, right? Awakening, evolving. Um, because we just, we didn't make the cutoff, <laughs> so to speak. Mm -hmm. And so maybe, you know, I, I, I really believe that whatever happens, whatever the outcome of this is, it is going to be a catalyst that really serves us in a beneficial way. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. I agree, I agree with you completely. How do people begin to recognize their purpose in the deeper way? How is it that you're helping people to tune into that in ways that perhaps weren't available to them before? Everyone from the moment you are born has the ability to hear, if you heard that small, still voice right within, to hear that call, what I can hear, hear that call home, right? That's pulling us through a life experience and then we transition from this physical body, we go home. So throughout that process is self-realization, awakening and so forth, right? And so many things happen within our childhood, well-meaning, but we get stuck in an old paradigm and old patterns and, and all of this that within our formative years. And it's really about speaking with people and just saying, do you recognize who you are? Mm -hmm. And when I ask that question, most people are talking about, you know, their mother and their father, how they toiled and how they lived their lives and that they are, they're living a reflection of the people that mentored them, that raised them and so forth. And I'll ask, but who are you? And it's really about guiding people to acknowledge that we are all here for a very specific purpose, especially within this lifetime, uh, within 2024, everyone who is alive right now, you are alive in a very auspicious time. Because this is a time when people are just being poked and prodded to wake up. And people are having more and more spiritual experiences. They are becoming um, more disenfranchised with what they've been doing in the past or the jobs that they hold. And there's a realization that's coming really through the heart and awakening people to the fact that there is so much more to life than they have experienced. Mm -hmm. And so within my work then, it is really about creating. And I would say this, I don't like the word healer <laughs> because no one can heal you in that sense. I call myself a facilitator of healing because everyone has their own own innate abilities to heal and transform their lives. So for me, it's really about awakening that knowledge from within and kind of stoking the fire. And so like when I do my transmissions, then I'm creating access points or doorways. And just through the tone and speaking and the revelations that I'm bringing forward through Elohim and your guides and your ancestors, it's about like having those aha moments, because when you have that aha moment, something slips in. <laughs> right? It's like um, something slips in like a new thought. Right. And then your mindset starts to change and you just you're more open to allowing in change or transformation into your life. And I think most of the time people are so challenged by fear. And it's, it's so much about letting go, even if people don't like their lives, even people who are experiencing traumatic events, often stay within those circumstances because the fear of the unknown is so much more intense than what it is that they are experiencing. Mm -hmm. And so it's really about showing people what life can be like and giving them through the through the world frequency work that I do, giving you a taste of what that feels like 
to be in that state of bliss or awe and within those those energies which by the way are you right mm -hmm. yeah and more and more of us are attuning and acclimating to that and we're showing each other what's possible it, it is something that we're embodying and demonstrating um and again the ripple of that is is pretty profound it's in the last 10 years, what's happened in our communities and the people who are showing up and, and, and those who are opening up to sharing what they're embodying in ways. Um, and those who are willing to open to community and, and not keep these dreams or these experiences in the closet like we're used to, it's the wave has been huge as to what's come through. Yeah, I, I, I'm talking to someone about this and, and talking about frequency, vibration, and so forth. And someone was asking me, it's really about entrainment. You can mm -hmm. entrain one person, you can entrain two people, you can entrain a group of people to a thought, right? So we, we are a reflection. I'm trying to remember the term. It was about really cultivating cultivating the community or friendships or relationships that are of same vibration. And mm -hmm. I think that's a way, because that's how we all rise up together, right? We all bring something to the table and everybody receives something. And generally speaking, when you're in a community, you can then receive what it is that you need and you can give what someone else needs. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really about entrainment. And you talk about, you know, people that are charismatic. Well, they're entraining people, like-minded people to their cause. And I think, you know, I hate the term, but light workers, <laughs> so to speak, right, are pretty much doing the same thing, mm -hmm. right? It's staying in that higher vibration and entraining others to that, to lift, to, to that same heightened vibration, and you hear that, you know, it's like changing, changing the world one person at a time. Mm -hmm. And that's really happening. And what's been coming in for me really strongly as well is that we're getting to the place where we are being challenged to raise the standards in which we hold ourselves and the expectations that we have for what we receive as well, not in a in a cavalier type of way but because we know uh, that there's a capacity to receive and experience that receptivity in ways that we haven't before we're feeling more safe there's a calling a pull if you will again with these legions of energies that are coming in to facilitate us there is something that is pinging in an ascensionary field as to what's possible and we're waking up it's like hold on a second i can I, I can I can move up to the penthouse instead of living all the way at the bottom without the view and what's possible there. You know, and sometimes it's not it's really not it's really not subtle. <laughs> sometimes it is, you know, when you when you are more prepared and open to receive and you're really truly asking for it. But there are many people just getting pummeled <laughs> and kicked around so forth. Um, I mean, there have been part, you know, points in my life where I just, I, I felt like I got run over by a car and they backed up and ran over me again. You know, just, <laughs> just life, in, life in general yeah. um, was beating me up. And that happens when I am not in alignment. But I think the same thing is really, truly happening to help wake society up, to wake people up, that they're having these these circumstances that lead to like this harsh reality that mm. I either stay here or I have to change. I must change. And it's like people are truly being forced into these situations to really make a choice. Mm. I agree. Beautiful initiations that we're going through. And, and it's, it's also in alignment with what's becoming available. And if we're aware that something that's facilitating an expansion within us, that we have access to that, the contraction begins to hurt so much that it really prompts a choice. And we know in our hearts and at a soul level also 
the implications of going in one direction or the other. Well, I, re I, I love the analogy of the expansion and the um, contraction. We just did that opposite expansion, contraction. <laughs> uh, because when we are open and willing and we're, we're in a state of flow and it's really about being open and willing to receive mm. and to also allow change because change is not comfortable, right? But if we're open and allowing to that, our lives just, they, they do expand, right? We get the, the they, we feel like we're in flow. Everything seems to be in alignment. We just, we get divine synchronicities. We meet the people we're supposed to meet. We get the information that we need. And so we're guided in our navigation of whatever map has been laid out before us. But there's also like the retraction where people are not open and they just feel like, you know, they're stuck on a crossroad without a GPS or a map or anything to guide them. Mm -hmm. And I think the, the more that we have people to guide us, it doesn't have to be like spiritual, not like non-physical um, beings, but as long as we have people around us that surround us, family members, friends, and spiritual people, what have you, that can really help to guide us and provide the tools and the resources and the openings that we need to move forward, then we begin to expand. Mm -hmm. But I think when we're talking about the world now, there are so many people in a state of contraction. Yeah, and I also feel what's happening in this conversation and the energy here, it's, it, I don't know if y'all are feeling, I bet some of y'all are, if not all of y'all, um, about what's being entrained in this particular field, which is amazing to me that it's it's so visceral for me at, at this time. Um, so I really appreciate that, Phyllis. Uh, I want to ask you a personal question. Um, and curious what the Elohim would have to share about that. And then we want to open a Q&A. We're going to get into transmission, of course, your special offer. Um, if you all want to ask questions, raise your hands. Uh, type your question into the chat box. Um, with your relationship with the Elohim. And, and I can feel the directness and the playfulness and the invitation for you to walk in your own mastery, but also to facilitate you whenever you can, you know, whenever support would be beneficial because of um, whatever you're experiencing. Do you ever get to a point with them where you're like, come on, just tell me what's happening next. So what's, what's happening two weeks or a month from now. And if they do share, what, what is it that they share with what's maybe coming and, and why is it that they, sometimes they're not so available to be quick to to decipher the path for you it's really interesting and I, I swear if angels claim they do not laugh but they have a very hysterical sense of humor right at the moment because <laughs> i can it sounds like they're up there oh. <laughs> yeah i i'm i i'm not so much anymore but i used to be really stubborn and hard-headed and I was one of those people, and I still, to this day, something fantastical happens. I, I'm, I just, I do things, and then I, I have no clue how I did that, and I don't need, I know, you know, there's like a knowing, but there's still that, that bit like, prove it to me, or, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but they don't tell me future things anymore in that sense, because there is no future right now the future is unlimited potentiality there is no past the past got us here but it's 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 complete or it should be if it's not complete then we're holding it we're holding it here right but it should be complete because we are not here to identify ourselves with anything from the past we're to remain in the present moment and we're not to attempt to identify ourselves with anything in the future because the future is malleable. So really and truly, everything, anything, everything here all at once is really true. It's in this present moment. And so I would always ask, I want to know, I want to know. And they're like, in the knowing that can actually change something because the future is malleable. 
if they were to tell us in this moment in time that such and such is going to happen, I would guarantee that many people would negate that or do something to change the trajectory. And that's why they don't talk about the future. Other than that, um, the, ter <laughs> this is funny. the terms of engagement at this moment in time are a key reflection of who it is that you are in this moment and who it is that you are presenting yourself to be to the rest of the world. Mm. Right. So we need to make the changes and be in the present moment because the future is a reflection of this present moment. So you got to mm. be the future now basically so that's why they don't they don't tell me anything because they used to give me names of stuff oh this and i i would i would i'd go to mr google who is that you know, i'd be looking up stuff and okay you go to mr google um half the things are true half the things are not true and some are just in between right so so that really wasn't beneficial to me because i would come away with the wrong idea so then they actually literally told me we think it best that we no longer we will give you the steps as mm. they are laid out before you, right? Beautiful, love that. I'm gonna get into Q&A here in a second. Um, so again, you guys raise your hands if you wanna ask questions. Um, there's very there's one person with their hand raised, so it's again, there's plenty of space. If you want to, if not, we'll just continue here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious what the Elohim has to say about the concept of good and evil good energies, evil energies, distorted energies, benevolent energies. Um, and, and also why their, their interpretation of, of the answer for that question. Love it. Uh, all right. Let us be clear. And I am our, I am Archangel Michael. So let us be clear. There is only energy. Energy exists as energy until you create it into another form. So when you speak of evil, when you speak of darkness, when you speak of negativity, well, that is of your own creation. It can be individual creation. It can be a community or group creation. It can be a societal creation. So one example of that is that you distinguish a boat as a boat, a door is a door, right? A violin is a violin. That is only an agreement. So when we speak of energy, energy in and of itself in the form that it takes is all a collective agreement or an individual agreement and generally individual agreement isn't just one person there were other persons that fed into that agreement and allowed you then to create exactly what it is that was lying on your mind Yes? Does that make sense? It does, yes. Good. Yeah, thank you, Michael. How do we bring it back into the simplicity that is energy and, and begin to have different perspectives around the different agreements that were created with others? You must drop the fear. <laughs> I thought, I, thought I thought he was gone. He should. <laughs> oh, He's right here. Um, yeah, uh, you, you must drop the fear. So everything is generally due to fear. So when something bad or negative happens, there is a fear. Instead, you should exist within a lifetime of childlike wonder and curiosity for what is next, right? What is it that I wish to create? 
now. But as a society, as a whole, humanity has a lot of fear. Mm. And there are also proclivities, we shall say. Proclivities that have to do with wants and desires that are on an individual or group basis that are not keeping the entire human collective in mind. Yes, do you understand? Yeah. So there's greed, right? There's power, there's monetary gain and all of that. So different people, different groups have created for themselves whatever it is from the foundations that were built for them that they can then stand upon. So mm. when someone is in fear, it is generally you can look back through familiar lines and you can look back at the ancestors and you can track where that fear initially has come forward from. Does that make sense? Yes. And that's amazing. And yes. And what do you say to someone who was beaten as a child who's afraid of getting beaten again? What do you say to someone who has been abandoned over and over again and fears that abandonment again? How is it that we just step outside of that fear and change the pattern? What is it that we can do to help the adjustment into a new reality uh, that doesn't bypass the severity of what was experienced in that trauma? It is very interested in, and interesting. And so when you look at the past, when we were talking about the past does not belong in the present moment because you are not meant to identify it. So if I were to start from the beginning, then I would talk about a soul coming in with a very specific purpose, a contract as it were, right? A mission of sorts. And that mission, that contract could also be that I wish to come back and it does sound harsh in the human mind, but I wish to come back and to experience some form of trauma, right? Mm -hmm. Because from that form of trauma, then they are they are learning something. They are learning to rise above and to take that learning and move on to the next step. But humanity has been unable for most, the most partly anyway, has been unable to relinquish the past and just say, oh, that was an experience. Now I'm going to leave that behind and I'm going to recreate something else. Mm -hmm. You're carrying it in your mind. You are carrying it in your mind that something from the past has co is coming forward and it is triggering then similar situations that occur in your life. And you say, oh, I'm going to be beaten again. And so then I would ask, and I would say as a friend or as a, uh, as a spouse or a partner, that you look at that person and say, in this present situation, is it the same or different? Mm -hmm. We have to understand that there can be similarities, but what is happening in the present moment is not what happened in the past. And if you bring the past forward, then you are recreating circumstances for yourself because you are the divine in physical form. And so when you carry that, it is an ingredient in a what is that word recipe it is an ingredient and a recipe that you are mixing and baking up for yourself but if you change the ingredients in the recipe then you are creating you are baking something new and different mm. so it does all come out to the fact that as a soul in your soul expression, that the God force within that has come into this physical presence to experience life. It comes down to the fact that you are here to experience life. You are not here to create episodes that you are going to then identify with the rest, the remainder of your physical life. Yes, mm -hmm. because then you are not experiencing, you are not allowing change to come forward. 
you are not allowing yourself to be in flow with those experiences so that the experiences themselves can go higher and higher and higher and then you will begin to awaken to the self-realization that you are the creator of exactly what it is that is expressing within your life. Does that make sense? It does make sense. I love that. Cool. The, the analogy that I'm picking up is it's, uh, I lived in South America when I was, when I was a young boy and the television stations were horrible. There were two, there were two television stations to choose from. So I could watch the news the variety entertainment show or the soap operas. And that was it. That was the limitation of what was available. And, and the vision of that and not, it's like, like only those, a couple of channels were available for us based on the consciousness that we received in before. But now we're in a place where we have cable TV, we have all these channels, we have all these different modes and what are we choosing to tune into and why? Our options have become more available. And even through our communication this way, we're realizing that there's multi-dimensional options and, and choices that are really helped to facilitate not just the knowing of what got created and what got created or why it got created, uh, but also what are we choosing to create with what we have now? Um, so again, we're 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 becoming the content creators in our own lives, if you will, social media is and YouTube and channels like that are becoming a beautiful mirror for her. We're becoming content creators in our own life. It's all a mirror. That yes. And that's exactly it. What Archangel Michael was talking about. Um, we're creating our own recipe. So we're choosing the ingredient, the ingredients and we're throwing those ingredients in and we're baking it up, right? We're, we're creating something from that. And so we have to stop and think about, okay, what ingredients am I choosing, right? Are they organic? <laughs> are they non-GMO? Right. Or do they, are they filled with, you know, whatever? <laughs> How spicy are they, right? <laughs> How spicy are they, right? Uh, so, but, but you understand what I'm saying. It, it, it's yeah. kind of like we choose our ingredients. And one of the things is the more ingredients we choose, that are to create something, then the more aligned we become with that those ingredients, right? Mm -hmm. Because we we choose a path, and so a lot of people watch re, you know reality television, and you know my husband he was watching some video about car crashes and stuff like really, and I was just like <laughs> my nervous system was like why 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 I can't take it. Uh, and my daughter loves the reality shows and I'm just like, why? Mm -hmm. Because it's that energy. I really think it, it pulls you down. It pulls you into that energy. And you have to stop to think about what am I receiving from this? Okay, I, I'd be the first to admit I have watched a reality show and it was more like, you know, trying to figure like you're out dodging bullets. Yeah, I'm like, why, why am I watching this? And I was enamored, and I, you know, and it's kind of like I really want to see what happens because does this get better? You know, type of thing. But what I'm saying is, you're you're watching this, and I think that people watch these things or they entertain themselves with things that take them away from their own reality, mm -hmm. and. So they'll get pulled further and further and further. And it's even like people that play video games. You have you have Second Life, I think it's called, where you can you can create a whole different life online. And so many people are creating different lives online that they like, that they feel aligned with because real life is not in alignment. But instead of deal with real life, a lot of people just medicate themselves mm -hmm. i would say i would say medicate themselves with these television shows and i would say even watching the news just really trying to glean that spectacle of things that that energy of things i think that that is really negatively fueling our society and people get locked into that energy as well i agree I agree. But I, I want to get into special offer. I want to get into transmission. I want to take them on this call. So we'll go through all that. But do you ever just 
pick up on the news just to pick up on the threads or where things are heading, not get so immersed in it and and perhaps emotionally or or mentally so involved that it throws you off a track. But do you find that sometimes you're just kind of gauging a pulse? Uh, yes, I, I, what I do is like an Apple news, you know, my phone where you get like the little paragraphs of stuff, right? yeah, <laughs> the, the short and sweet version of things. I, I will occasionally scroll through that really the only time I'm guided to watch the news or information that might have come out on like YouTube or something like that is when Elohim guides me to watch mm. it. So then I know that if I'm to watch this, it's something that I'm I'm to be aware of, but it's also something that I can help with in right. the work that I do. And so in that case, I, you know, I remember, I don't know why this popped in my head, but I remember like um, 9-11. I didn't know anything about it. I was going to, and then all of a sudden um, I pulled, I, I pulled into a parking spot and Elohim said, turn on the news. Hmm. And I'm like, okay. So I turned the radio on. And then I was like, oh my God, I hadn't, I hadn't heard it and the energy of that. And so I did one of my heavenly <laughs> mandated missions um, for that as well. So generally when I'm pulled into something like that, it can be like a disaster or something that's, that's happening where the work that I do will be beneficial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's wonderful. And again, good to have an awareness about it. Not that it's all bad, not that we need to avoid it at all costs, but really follow the guidance and be open to where we're being directed. Because if we are directed, it, it has purpose mm -hmm. in different ways. It can be our own healing. It can be being aware so that we can hold the container for what's possible and the shift and and, and become a, a, a weight to balance when the tips are scaling in particular ways and to support one another. Oh, go ahead, Phyllis. Yeah, I was going to say, I totally agree with that. I kind of like the, the weight and measures thing. I the really like the yeah. counterweight mm -hmm. because I think that that's a lot of what light workers, um, mm -hmm. they do. They serve as counterweights yeah. for things, right. right? Doesn't that feel accurate to you guys? Can you feel that in you and how sometimes or maybe a lot of times act as that counterbalance. And it's all, it's, it's with compassion, not because we have to rearrange the furniture in other people's lives, but because we're, we're aware and we bring that in with compassion and love and, and this tremendous strength and power in that, but not for the sake of overpowering an outcome, but for the sake of amplifying what's available in that place that is, that is bringing about a clear vision of a potential outcome based on a particular choice. And I think it's really about keeping things from escalating as mm. well. Like I'm often guided to help out with situations that if I and others didn't do something, it would escalate. Yeah. And there are so many beings out there that are really truly uh, here to assist humanity and our process of awakening and they do a lot of that um let's not let this escalate type of thing right? oh, yeah. oh yeah amazing amazing all right let's get into some q a um april or chris put the special offer in the chat box please y'all the special offer is epic um and of course we'll get into a transmission as well uh phyllis has already agreed i think you agreed you asked if we were doing one and i said i'd love to so I, I yes i will do one so we'll get into transmission. It feels like towards the end of the call also, y'all. Um, and and y'all click in the special offer link and we're going to go through it in a little bit, but at least keep it open. If you go through the transmission and kind of are so just altered in the most beautiful way by it, um, you'll have the page to go back to because I know you're going to want to dive into the special offer as well. Uh, but let's go in a little bit of Q&A first. And Linda, what is your question? Hi, Phyllis. It's Hi, lovely Linda. to talk to you. So how do we realign when we feel physically and spiritually attacked? And what did the Elohim offer to keep ourselves above those attacks? Yes. 
Kuor pas jėčiau. Į kai rėvi džiūtų turus be jėri tūro, pukų, ok. Jėri tūro, you can speak. Be jėtų būtų nemyrė būdra, tai vaš myrė speak, ok. When you... When you feel that you are... People don't like to hear this, but we shall lay it on the line, ok. When you feel that you are being spiritually attacked or psychically attacked, it is because you believe that you are being spiritually attacked and psychically attacked. And so really there is no need in protection when we are really allowing ourselves to identify with our divine essence. And we allow ourselves to raise, to lift our vibration and to be radiant, right? So a lot of, I remember being a lot of trainings and so forth in the past, shamanism and so forth, and there was always a protective measure that I was, I needed to take in order to do the work. And that was one of the things that the angels would swoop in and say, you do not need protection. And so they, they actually put me through a circumstance finally um, to teach me how powerful I was and anyone is to be able to cast that that brilliant sphere around you. And so okay. if you feel that you're being spiritually attacked and so forth, it means that your energy is so drawn in that those energies have the capability to affect you in some way, shape or form. And it can be physically and emotionally, but mostly, usually it's both because there has to be a belief. Okay. So how do we keep ourselves raised to a better um, or higher level and keep our um, auric field wider? It is pretty easy. Did I ever tell, I don't know, John, did I ever tell you guys my, my, when I met with Jesus and he showed me how to be radiant? <laughs> well, share again. It's worth repeating. Okay, I don't, yes, that's okay. okay. So there were two, there, there's two quick stories that I'm just, they're like, tell these stories. Okay. So I was in a brujeria workshop, which was, you know, magic. And I really, from my religious upbringing, I had a fear of magic, but Elohim's like, no, go, go, go. And so I just sat there, you know, <laughs> eyes wide open the entire time. And so it was actually very, very interesting. And so we, in order to graduate, we had to go outside. And my teacher at that time said, I'm going to draw a white circle. You're going to stand inside of it. I'm telling the first, I'm telling the second story first. You need to stand inside of it. Okay. And then I'm going to bring forward negative entities. And he taught us like a word and an action to dispel them. Right. So, okay. so now I'm going to skip, skip to the first story. So now I'm standing in the circle, flipping out a little bit. Okay. So years <laughs> before that, I was in a Stargate meditation, and in the meditation, Jesus came forward and said, you know, I, I was, he said, do not glorify me. I am not to be idolized. I am a man, and I'm here to teach you something, right? So he said, instead of focusing on this visage, focus on my, my sandaled feet. And I was looking at his feet going, and I'm like, well, it's a man's feet in, in leather sandals, right? But the image of Jesus was right out of my little kid Bible. <laughs> you know, I'm like, oh, like yeah. but I didn't really have a vision. So anyway, he said, I'm here to teach you how to be radiant. And so I was like, he goes, that is your protection because you are of the divine, right? Yes. Allow your, you know, you talk about the um, Jesus being robed in light and all of that stuff. Well, everybody can be robed in light. So he said, okay, I'm going to teach you how to be radiant. And he said, yes, so you're going to go like this. And he just went, Whew. and I was bowled over. And I was like, whoa. And, and he said, okay, now you do it. And I'm like, and I remember telling him, I think my light is constipated. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was all scared. I was like, what Sign am I doing? Honey. Sad. No. <laughs> he said, he said, go like this. And he made the sound. He went, and I felt that surge of energy again. So I said, okay. And I just, I just relaxed. And I, I did that motion. I went, and I felt my energy 
just expand. expand out because I just cleared my mind and just honored who I truly am. So anyway, so flip forward to the second the story I started with. I am standing in this little white circle flipping out that some negative entities are going to come forward and I don't know what to do. And the key thing was what he taught us didn't feel true to me. Okay. And so I called on my angels and I said, what am I supposed to do? And Archangel Michael, of course, came in and said, Phyllis, be who it is that you are. So I'm standing there. What the heck is that? Well, I remembered. <laughs> so I'm doing my little things and I'm doing a little singing. And then I went, oh, yeah. And I went, Phew. and I felt this energy. And then I was standing there. And I remember everyone doing the word and the action to dispel the, you know, the, the negative spirits and so forth. And I see my teacher and his assistant walking quite a ways away and they stopped and he cocked his head and they were looking at me for the longest time. So then a little later he said, okay, it's, it's over, you know, let's go in and we'll talk about our experience. And so I'm the first to like raise my hand and I said, I think I did something wrong. I'm so silly. And he goes, why Phyllis? And I said, well, because no negative entities, I, I didn't get a chance to do anything. No eg negative entities approached me. And he looks at me and he's like, Phyllis, you did everything right. He said, remember where I was standing? You cast your sphere of light so wide that I was standing on the outskirts of it. And everybody that was in your sphere, they didn't have an experience either. And then a couple of people said, yeah, thanks, Phyllis, because they, they were like in my sphere. But I just, what it was, was I'm like, oh, they, they had to prove to me that that was a thing. So from that moment forward, I just had to really trust and dispense with everything I had learned about protecting myself. Because when we do those forms of protection, it actually diminishes us and it diminishes our capability to do the work that we're meant to do at the level we are meant to do it. It keeps us from coming into full awakening and ascending within the physical form because it keeps us small. Right? Mm -hmm. It not only keeps things out, it keeps things in as well. So all of that to say, be radiant and trust in the brilliance of your own soul aspect your own God force that exists from within you. You just have to trust, right? And do that little and just envision like a bright flash of light and envision it flowing outwards in all directions. And then nothing can come in. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Does that make that sense? was wonderful. Yes. Right. Thank you so much. John, thank you for bringing Phyllis back. I love sure. her. I yeah. mean, she's just amazing. Thank you so much, time. Phyllis. Oh, you're welcome. And I appreciate the answer that you gave. That was wonderful. I want to bring in an empowerment and awareness as well, because this is very much reminding me also of one of the most poignant quotes for me in the book, The Art of War, which is significant. And, and the quote says that the leader who fears war invites it to his doorstep. Mm. The leader who fears war invites it to his doorstep. Love, and love, the love. amplification in this energy and this knowing who you are, if you're trying to amplify that because you're trying to bypass your fear, it, we have to also understand that fear is also an initiation to remind us who we are. True. And so don't just get into, I'm going to amplify this because I want to get out of the discomforts of what I'm feeling. There has to be a knowing in your heart that the light always wins and trust and faith in that. And that is what allow this amplification to put you in that place of alchemy, of your remembering. But we're not going to get to bypass that which we still have to learn and embody as well. And so we'll have relationship of those parts of ourselves where we're inviting that war home because we're aware that there's an opportunity to release the ancestral beliefs, the accumulated and qualified experiences up to now and to alchemize it in a way where we're not living in that environment or festering that in the ways that we used to. So there's an empowerment piece that comes through 
and amplifying our light. And sometimes we have to stand toe to toe of that which we fear and have faith and not run from it. But be okay allowing the ego to sift through the full emotional experience in our physical body so it can be finally transcended once and for all. So I love what you're sharing in this, Phyllis. It's so profound. Um, and it is an initiation that we're going through. It is, and I would add to that a little bit. You know, when we look at our, our lives as a map that we have to navigate, it is, it's like a map. We're navigating the map of our lives. Pretty much everything that we experience is foretold. We can circumvent it by having, you know, changing experiences. But for the most part, the majority of experiences that we come into this life to actually have are going to happen in some way, shape or form mm -hmm. but so we can't necessarily circumvent it but we can allow ourselves to be brilliant and illuminate that situation so that we can then look at it from a higher perspective and really see what is happening so that we can make a more informed decision mm -hmm. than allowing ourselves to reside down within the energy of the circumstance itself if yeah that kind of makes sense so. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Thank you so much. Linda, thank you for initiating this. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you, Phyllis. Mm -hmm, you're All right, y'all. The special offer link, it's in the chat box. Click on it. Uh, we're going to get to the page. Melissa, let's go to your question, and then we'll get into special offer. We'll get into the transmission, and um, let's see where everything hey. lands. <clears throat> hey, yeah, great. Um, Thanks. Thanks, John, and thanks, Phyllis. It's great listening to you, and at the same time, sometimes I just absolutely feel overwhelmed with how to proceed. I feel definitely that I am here on earth to be helping and doing something. And I see myself doing things in little ways, but then I, I still feel this like depression and, and I wanna feel more joy and, and be able to raise myself up, lift myself up so that even in my quiet moments with myself, I'm like, okay with who I am. And I love the poof. It's like, okay, let's just go poof. <laughs> and then every, everything just magically makes me feel better. Um, my question is, is like, can you sense, can, is there something that I'm not doing enough of? Hmm. No. Really what it is, is, and an, I just went through a whole, several days last week of this kind of depressive state coming up for me and many of my clients what we begin to realize and what they begin to understand is that when we find ourselves within these states it's because we we are within a a, a lower framework of energy that is teaching us something but it's also wanting to bring something up and forward so that we have the opportunity to let it go. Mm -hmm. But I was telling Elohim, I don't want to feel this stuff anymore. Why do I have to feel this? And it's because when we have things from the past that are trapped within the physical body and the mind, it's because we did not allow ourselves to feel it to its, to its end point or fruition. And so a lot of times, especially now, these things are coming up because it's like you need to feel it so that you can let it go. Mm -hmm. It needs to come to its end point. And so a lot of people don't want to allow themselves to feel. So they feel a certain way for an extended period of time versus just sitting down and allowing that that whatever that is to well up and to cry or pound a pill or, you know, whatever it is mm -hmm. that you need to do. It's not about going back and figuring out what it's tied to. All it is is energy and that has been trapped. And so when you can kind of allow that to come forward and just feel it, express it and let it go, it, it will. The other thing is a lot of times we feel these symptoms and so forth because we are not in alignment with our true path and purpose like our soul's, our soul's mission, right? Mm -hmm. And so you made a comment about, I see myself doing things, right? 
So I don't remember your exact words, but when you see yourself doing something, what do you do about that? What do you do with that inspiration? We receive these divine inspirations and visions because it is thought that then we will take action on whatever mm. that is. But a lot of times we don't take action out of fear, right? Uh, we don't, we don't, I don't know how I get from, I can see it, right? But I really don't know what to do to get from point A to point B. But what spirit, the angels, your guides and so forth, what they are wanting you to do is just to simply say, I want that. And in the, I want that, Mm -hmm. There's a positivity and a desire that's put forth. Mm -hmm. And so then we are beginning to create that. And then we just have to start to take steps towards it. Mm -hmm. When we start to take steps towards that vision, then your guides are going to step up and say, oh, there she goes. And they're going to help clear the way. They're going to start bringing in the tools and the resources and the people and so forth that need to help or influence you as you take steps forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Phyllis, oh. a, a distinction that I'd, I'd, I'd love for you to, to, to expand on. There's a difference between I want that for someone else and I want that for me. There is. And the distinction is that you, you can want something for someone else, all that you desire, right? But you can't make them do it and you can't give it to them. Right. Mm -hmm. We're each an individual soul expressing within physical form, and we all have our life experiences lined up. We're here for a reason, basically. And so it's really about trying to support another individual in a way that will help them to change their direction or to change their mind. But they're the ones that need to change their mind. They're the ones that need to change their heart in order to help carry their own desire to express themselves differently, to take a, to have a different thought, to have a different action. So when Elohim told me this, I thought, well, gosh, that's really selfish. They were telling me that you're here for you. Yes. And you alone, mm -hmm. right? We're not here for our children. <laughs> we're not here for our partners, our spouses, or <laughs> whatever, which sounds kind of funny, but we are here for ourselves first to have an experience. So then we are walking the, through the experience of being a wife, being a mother, being a teacher, being a cousin, being a nephew, being, you know, whatever it is, being a lawyer, being a doctor. We are experiencing those things. And that goes back to you're not here to identify with anything. You're simply here to experience. Because when we, we start to get locked in place and stuck, when we begin to identify with something because we've given ourselves a label and consciously we become that. So I can say, I, I am a mother. I have a 24 year old daughter. I am a wife, right? Those are beautiful experiences. I learn from it every day. I enjoy it. I love every minute immensely, right? However, I don't, I don't like, put a label on myself and hang a shingle and put up a facade, right? So a lot of people build those facades. I am mother, you know, I am lawyer. <laughs> Hear me roar. No, <laughs> but that, like this is who I am because they feel really comfortable in identifying with something and they allow that identification to take over the progression of their lives. Well, Phyllis, and I want to interject also, and there's also, but I know I'm here because I'm supposed to be X, Y, and Z as well. And that gets interjected as well. I want to really hit that point. But when we do that, we're in flow. We don't get stuck. Right. Whenever, when we're doing something that's in alignment with our soul's mission, soul's journey, whatever you want to call it, things seem to flow. Floodgates open. Floodgates open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's a good way to tell when you're stuck. When you when you're stuck, you feel stuck. It means that you are not your vibration is not in alignment with what it is with anything that you desire or what it is you desire to bring into your life, what it is that you desire to create. We have to be in vibration. There's that old story. I don't know if it's true. I hear it all the time about that tribe that's on the waterfront and this ship 
comes in and the chief is like look at the ship look at the ship and everyone's like is he crazy because they don't see the ship they don't see the ship because they don't have a reference point they don't know what a ship is so they see nothing which i think is really interesting and when my daughter was a child that happened like people don't necessarily everybody sees a different reality and that different reality is based upon our filters and what it is that we've experienced we can sit in the same room Hear someone say something and we all heard something different because we have a different reference point that we actually tag on to whatever it is that they said. Does any of that make sense? Oh, that makes lots yeah. of sense. Melissa, I want to invite you to be extremely selfish. <laughs> extremely selfish with a capital S. Hey. Oh, oh, yeah. Hard to do. to do. I would like to tell you, this is Archangel Michael, thank you. I would like to tell you to write a list because when you can express on paper through pen and write it down exactly what it is that you desire within your life, exactly what it is that you wish to change, you are then putting energy for towards that, right? Mm -hmm. So do that, and that will begin to shift your energy because you'll have focal points. Beautiful. Blessings to you, Melissa. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming on. Yep. Thank you. All right, y'all. Click on the special offer link. We're going to go through that before we get into the transmission. Um, ah, I, I love being on the call with you, Phyllis. It's so amazing. Oh, thank um, you. It's fun. <laughs> y'all y'all get more Phyllis in the special offer, which is an extremely special price. Uh, Phyllis, let everybody know what they're going to receive when they dive in with you here. Uh, well, this is the Holy Template Realignment Series. It is three um, uh, celestial invocations and transmissions through Elohim. And each one lasts up for a period of seven days. So there's a, there's a prescription of the number of times you need to listen to it. Um, plus the first time uh, through the seven days. And so each of the transmissions it takes you through what they call a spiritual, um, spiritual alchemy, or yeah, spiritual alchemy prescription. Right? Mm. It's a cycle, and so then the next one takes you to the next level. So it's about clearing all of those things, and it it does not clear, which is interesting. It had to. It is about clearing all of the things that you know, clearing the distortions and the misalignments that are keeping you from your aligning with the resonance of your holy template, your God self, we'll just call it that. But what it does is, and the reason that there's a cycle is that it creates a doorway for you. Some create a gateway, right? You, it's your choice to walk through, which is why they give you the prescription, because it's like, it's kind of like nipping away at stuff. <laughs> they're, they're showing me a miner and he's like, chinking away at this mountain and there's a diamond buried in there and that's what it does it starts to like break down your defenses and the but what ifs and all of that and it brings you to that point of full acceptance and so forth so there is a whole thing in the beginning about when you sit down you want to be open and willing to receive all that you are meant to receive from that transmission in order to transform your life right when we can state that it allows it allows you to it allows you to go through to that next step but it allows every the frequencies and so forth that come through in the transmission to actually land where mm. they're supposed to land so that they can start um, doing the work they're meant to do beautiful a lot of y'all have experienced Phyllis's transmission samples on the show um, a lot of y'all have gone into the special offers from before and this one as well. Um, and this is an amazing opportunity, especially with the support and the capacity and what we're holding ourselves individually and what we're ready to expand into because we just can. We just can now. And, and the choice of choosing what else is possible in our consciousness and our experience it's it's a gift um that for me inspires awe and curiosity um 
And I want to invite you into the awe and curiosity of discovering who else you be in this multi-dimensional realm that you're creating. And um, it's phenomenal. Realign with Phyllis. It's $111. There's a two payment option. You receive the downloads. And again, you'll get a prescription for how long to listen to it, how long to go through the alchemical process. Um, and it's quite extraordinary. I hope you all take advantage of it. Um, click on the buy now button um and start diving in as as early as later this evening or tomorrow um with these transmissions and with that phyllis i'd love to open up to your transmission if you're ready unless you feel guided to go somewhere else no i think um what i will do i'm not going to use a soundtrack i'm just going to um it's just my voice because mm -hmm. you had said that you couldn't hear that so i'm not sure what's happening with that but All right. Can you hear that? Yes. Yes. So I invite you to just sit back and close your eyes. And just within yourself, ground however um, works for you, grounding into the earth requesting mother earth to send her energy up into your body to create that that foundation where you are rooted so that you can receive and just being open to allow in any higher guidance your guides the angels the ancestors and so forth to assist you and they are telling me to pin myself so there we go <clears throat> to assist you in moving forward so just be open and allowing and allow yourself to surrender you're not giving yourself up who you are and so forth but you are surrendering to this higher 12th dimensional uh, guidance of frequencies that are wanting to come through to assist you to be more of who it is that you are and to assist you in all ways possible for you to awaken to your true self. The transmission will begin. Breathe. Feel the breath of life, filling the body, expanding the lungs, expanding the belly, moving the spine. Feel the connection with the breath. Feel the interconnectivity to all things around you.
i kjerë në të kërë shumë bë kjerë, në mërë kësu kënë të rispjerë të kërë. Miro në dhire kjerë, në atore më më bandre rikur, o mare risirë, në kërë në të urorë, a ma kjerë risirë me qërë hurë, së në dhirë dorë, a nga dore mëndre, a nga dore mëndre, Allow yourself to be open to the full expression of who it is that you are. Do not worry what other people think. Do not worry about understanding what is going on around you if it is not residing within your personal sphere. 
We can to turn to Bokura, to tour a Pahira. Open up to the true essence of who it is that you are, that is already residing within you. Open up and allow it to express and evolve and expand out into the world, so that you are then expressing not from ego, not from past, but you begin then to express from your God force. and feel into that. Breathe deeply into that. Breathe deeply into the God force that exists within you. And allow it to be. Thank you for allowing me to express into this experience for the benefit of all beings everywhere. I leave you in love. The transmission is complete. Oh, thank you. That was the Elohim, is that correct? That was just speaking. Oh, that was that was Arch Archangel Michael. <laughs> oh, that was Michael coming through. Okay. <laughs> wow. Wow. So powerful, Phyllis. Thank you. Thank you for the special offer, the transmissions that are alive there for us. Thank you for this activating and empowering conversation and the flow of it with you. Um, thank you for the transmission, Michael, the conversation, Elohim. Um, yeah, amazing call. So glad that guidance asked me to reach out so that we can do this specifically today. Um, Yes, beautiful. It felt when I got the invitation, it was like, felt truly in alignment, though I didn't really know what was going to happen. <laughs> yeah, neither did I. <laughs> neither did I. But we trusted, we felt it, uh, which was powerful. So again, thank you. Thank you for coming on. And yes. thank you to all of you for being on the call today, listening to the replay. Yes, there was questions in the chat box and they came in a little bit later than I anticipated. So we didn't get a chance to go through all of it. Um, but y'all reach out to Phyllis directly or come back on the show or reach out to me as well and then let us know how we can support. Yes, it felt like we were in an ayahuasca ceremony. Totally get that. Um, <laughs> Taylor, thank you so much. All right, Phyllis, blessed evening to you. Thank you again. Yes, Bless blessings to all of y'all. Namaste, y'all. See you on the next call.